guys, it's me, Stormy, and it is just about time to have this new moon in Capricorn. It's going to be happening January 16th at 28 degrees of Capricorn, which we can see indicated right here on the chart. Now, I do want to tell you straight from the get-go, we know that the new moon is the time that we plant these seeds of intention, but the effects of this new moon are going to last four weeks up until the February 15th solar eclipse. So the best time to really make use of this energy, to make a fresh start, do these new beginnings, plant those seeds of intention and take some action is during the first two weeks of this new moon cycle. Okay, because this is the waxing phase of the moon and it lasts from January 16th all the way until the lunar eclipse on the 31st. So you've got a good two weeks to really plant those seeds of intention, really get those fresh beginnings going, making those brand new starts, things like that. Or really some of what this new moon about is hurrying up and completing some of the projects you've been working on, right? I don't know about you, but I'm definitely experiencing that. So before we jump in and break down the astrology and the meaning of this new moon, I want to remind you that we have got $3 Thursdays going on. I hope to see you there. It's going to be the third Thursday of every single month. I will be talking about an astrology concept. So all you've got to do is bring your natal chart, bring you, and I'm going to answer questions, teach a little bit, and then we're going to look around some charts together. Much smaller, much more intimate setting than just when I'm in the big live chat. So a lot of fun. I hope that you sign up. Our next one is going to be, or our first one, I guess I should say, is going to be January 18th. And the last day to sign up for that is going to be the 15th. So you can buy in for one session or just buy the whole year for $36. So it's up to you, but I hope you join. Everything's in the description box as always. Now it was requested in this video that I use the pointer. So hopefully you guys are able to see what I'm pointing to. If not, let me know in the comments down below. Okay. All right. So let's jump in and talk about this moon. Now, first of all, this really is, this is the last real moon phase before we start eclipsing for the year, right? There's always this time right before we eclipse. And so it does have a little bit of a, um, a hurried feeling to it, I think, especially being in the, in the sign of Capricorn. Like I said, I've been trying to really feeling this push to finish up these last projects I've been working on, things I've been working on for about the past five months, really looking at things, um, comparing it to the eclipse that we had back in August, right? Looking at what was happening for me then as to what does it look like now? Because if you look back at the August 2017 solar eclipse and look at how things have developed for you now, whatever that theme was, whatever that long-term success um, sticking kind of thing that you started back then, you should be seeing some of that turn up now, but you may be trying to get it done because remember Capricorn wants to achieve, right? So one of those things that I think is huge for everybody at this moon, I mean, look at how busy Capricorn is first of all, but this moon really does have a really nice alignment conjunction right here with not only the sun because it's a new moon, but Venus. So this brings love and money to the surface, love, money, harmony, value, those things are riding on the top of the surface, really helping to bring together this, this harmony in the romance and the financial zone for sure. Now, this moon also does sit in a square that we can see right here to Uranus, which Uranus is surprising, unexpected change. He's coming to break down our structures, our barriers, and say, hey, if you want a new experience, the intuition I'm going to leave you says you have to get out of the box that you were living in and get into something bigger, right? So he's coming to break down these structures. So it can also bring a sense of uncertainty. It is a square. Now, but whatever, whenever you see a square, guys, keep in mind that a square is asking you to take immediate attention to it and to take some action to reduce that square, to get to the other side of whatever the conflict is or the surprise is, okay? Now, you can also see here as a point for you, this it's very faint, but it's a thin line right here where we've also got um, the moon in a sextile to Mars. So a sextile, whenever the planets have sex, that's good for us, right? So it's kind of like Mars is actually coming in here. He's bringing a little desire, bringing a little heat, a little passion. And actually the sextile is about resolving conflict, resolving issues connected to the moon, resolving emotional issues, things like that. So sometimes I feel like when I see this 
kind of pattern where we've got a square Uranus sextile Mars. It's almost like the universe brings a message out of your mess, right? Like it just looks like a big mess, but that it turns out to be something really beautiful. So let's talk first and foremost about what the new moon is. Now, when we do have the new moon, this is the end of one cycle and the beginning of another cycle, and it's about 28 days, okay? So with the sun in conjunction with the moon, this is life. This is like the sun and the moon, these are our opposites. They come together, they're, they're vitality right? This is, this is the time where we shed those old habits, those old beliefs, and we get ready to start something new. So that's what's happening whenever we're talking about a new moon, okay? Now, this particular new moon has its own astrology. It's, first of all, in conjunction with this beautiful Venus energy here, right here, which will focus you in on harmony, diplomacy, beauty, love. You may find yourself where you're like, I just want to be comfortable. I want to be satisfied. I want to spend time with my family. I want to spend time being social. Maybe you're married. Maybe you are in a romantic situation. Now, I do think because we are in the energy of Capricorn, and that can tend to be a little bit more serious, you could also have some harmony around business or business business partnerships as well, or you have a desire, right? Because this Mars is still active over here. You might have a desire to have harmony around these relationships for, for sure. Now, I do want to say too, you guys, if you've been feeling lonely or you've been feeling like this is just never going to work out for me, um, if that loneliness, if that desire to have somebody has been there for a while, I think that this is going to be a time where, first of all, I do feel like it's going to be about putting yourself and your reputation out there a little bit more. And maybe even with Venus here, beautifying yourself in some way. And that is not to say that you're single because you're ugly. That is not what I just said, okay? What I'm saying is the way that you regard yourself could have a vibrational blockage to where you're trying to go. So I don't want to say love yourself because, yes, you do need to love yourself. But what I think that this um, puts you in a position to do is to look at why you're not achieving here, not from the standpoint of not being good enough, but from the standpoint of, are you lacking joy? Are you lacking consistently in your life? Are you just rolling out of bed, think it's going to happen? Like, where can you shift with the vibration, right? Now, apart from relationships, anytime we have Venus with the moon, it's so good for being creative, for cosmetics, for decorating, for beautifying something in some way. So I, again, think that this is really beautifully helpful to you. Now, this new moon is also sitting in this square to Uranus, and Uranus also having just enough of the influence on this Venus energy here, because this is a conjunct energy, so together energy. I do think that it can create challenge in relationships or unexpected things, unexpected events. Um, for some people, it will really push your need for freedom or push your need for independence, things like that. Uranus is not known to be the most patient sign ever, the most patient planet. So, you know, what I think ultimately happens, happens here, if in any of your relationships you have felt like you're in a box, you're, this could create that space where you want to get out of the box, even just emotionally. Now, if you have a totally healthy relationship and the sun is just shining on you, all of that good kind of stuff, this may just actually help you be a little bit more open-minded. You may have a new adventure coming to the table, right? Um, it's almost like you just need some new spontaneity in your life. You have a, a craving, a desire for something deeper, right? So any of those things are things you might be feeling. Now, if you're single, you're dating, things like that. I think especially if you're single or you're dating, being around or maybe even attracting into you like a person who's different than you, maybe really eccentric or something like that, or maybe even a person who's kind of erratic, <laughs> I think that that is definitely a possibility. Now, I will tell you, new romance is always possible when we get Venus in the mix. Um, but be mindful, Uranus likes to bring in temporary people or temporary circumstances. So I'm not saying it won't work if somebody comes. I'm saying just pay attention, okay? Now, some other aspects we see here, we see Mars, you see this blue line happening right here. Mars is also in a quincunx to Uranus. So this tells me that you've got to think before you act, right? Go out, try new things, experiment with different things. Um, definitely Mars, Uranus energy, sexual um, adventures definitely come to the table, right? Um, but 
think before you act because you could really, it seems so good and then you touch that, that burner and it is still hot, okay? But some of the unpredictable, some of the spontaneity takes a lot of courage, takes a lot of patience, takes a lot of faith to go on a little bit of a new exploration, um, especially in terms of your emotions and getting yourself out there into the world. So really exciting. I think it's a very courageous aspect. Now, the sextile that we were talking about here Really good for being social, really good for dating, really good for relationships. So, you know, if you're in a relationship with yourself, with another person, with a business, whatever it looks like for you, and it feels like the passion, the fire, the excitement has kind of gone out, um, I think that these aspects we're working with at this moon help you seek to achieve, because that's the Capricorn energy, a new state where the fires are lit, you're ready to go, you're ready to do this, you're into the game, you know what I mean? So there are also a couple bonus aspects that I just want to share really quickly here, and I'm going to wrap it up. I try not to make these too long. Mars is in conjunction to Jupiter. This is great for a new moon because not only does it give it opportunity, it gives it generosity, it gives it wisdom, right? Jupiter is a self-confidence kind of planet. So you are able to get something out there. You're able to um, initiate or ignite something. Jupiter is also sitting here in a sextile right here to Pluto. Okay, that's beautiful. That is fortunate energy. It's change. Remember, Pluto says we have to go from one thing to another. And Jupiter's like, yes, let's change this. Let's get this out there. I have got some new opportunities available for my person, but I need them to shift with me. So a very natural flow though, you don't have to force anything. This is change that will naturally occur. And this could be things like creating new levels of wealth for yourself, professional changes, career changes. Um, some of you, especially if this is falling in anywhere in the 12th or 8th houses for you, um, could definitely have some spiritual changes that come to you, but really, really nice. Now, you'll get this energy again April and September of 2018, so this is not your last chance to really take advantage of these placements that I was telling you about, okay? So when I look at this moon as a whole for 2018, Capricorn energy Really, guys, I think that this is about, first of all, expecting the unexpected because we really do have a Uranian hand in here. If anything looks like it's uncertain, if anything looks like you don't know what to expect from it, you got to just go with the flow and be passionate about what you're moving towards because it's going to unfold in a way I think is super harmonious. I do feel like this is a wonderful moon, a wonderful energy for achieving love, harmony, balance, value, understanding of value in your relationships, especially your relationships that have anything to do with business or your home life. Friendships and things like that I think will be fine, but I really feel like in the business and the home life, because that's Capricorn energy, he's out in the world and his opposite is Cancer down at home, so we always want to look at the opposites. This moon, as it comes to the end, I think that you see things resolving. I think that you see that you've put in the effort, you've stayed the course, you've spoken your truth, you've been willing to get outside of your box, and you have got some absolutely new growth and new happiness that you certainly want, and I think now we're able to expect because you see how it has to get done, and it's a very passionate process, you know what I mean? Fire turns things down. Sometimes you got to have some fire to turn the earth over. You really do, so... I hope you guys have a beautiful new moon. Grab your charts. Look at where this energy is happening for you. Find Capricorn. See what house this is affecting for you. See how all of these planetary energies are coming together in your chart. And if you're stuck, reach out. Get a reading. Let me help you. There's a lot of stuff going on at stormygrace.com, so come over and visit me. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I hope my little pointer was awesome this week. So let me know in the comments below, okay? I love you guys. Bye.